Jenny Mack with your daily comedy news. Nate Bergazzi, he is one of the top stand-ups right now. If he's not on your radar, pay attention to him. Or wait until January 31st and put on Amazon. You'll see his new special, Nate Bergazzi, Hello World. The special recorded on a 360-degree stage at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix. The topics, growing up in the 80s and 90s, the hardest part of marriage, and saying dumb things, all very relatable to me. His last special, he filmed it during like the middle of the pandemic when you could go to a show, but you had to sit, you know, 20 feet from everybody else. That was a really good special. Enjoyed that one a lot. Ricky Gervais tweeted, loads of people who couldn't get tickets asking me if his new show Armageddon will be on Netflix. The answer is yes. Ricky adds, I will continue touring it throughout 23. Then it will stream on Netflix around the world in 2024, if we're not all dead, obviously. Uh, You might not want to hold your breath for that one. The Guardian saw Ricky Gervais' Armageddon. They gave it two stars out of five. They review smug, macho, playground banter. The Guardian caught the Armageddon show at the Apollo in Manchester and wrote, There's ample room in comedy to tease at woke over earnestness, but this week in set fails to engage. Ricky Gervais gives us a little lecture after curtain call tonight about taking offense. Laughter's always good. No one's getting hurt, that kind of thing. But not for the first time. It's a specious argument setting up various straw men to represent those of us who might demur from his boorish comedy. I'll read the next sentence verbatim. I'm not suggesting his jokes about dwarves, disabled creatures, and all the age-old targets of abuse will lead directly to hate crimes. I am suggesting they're operating to a comic standard more associated with the playground than the stand-up stage. The Guardian adds, it's a bit sad. Gervais is a clever chap and a compassionate one, towards animals at least, but he's convinced himself that anti-woke is a rebellious pose to strike, then convinced himself again that juvenile bans represents the best way to stage that rebellion. And so for punchlines, we get African babies with AIDS, sweatshop children whose moms got raped, and Gervais's fictional limbless son being called you little effing grub. If we don't laugh, we're fragile and scared of words. Throw in a few gags about his penis size from the 61-year-old and the descent from the salad days in the office is near complete. Wow. With his jokes about the overuse of the word fascist or a devious bit about so-called cultural appropriation, Ricky shows how good he could be if Armageddon's spirit were curious and engaged rather than macho and smug. Ricky Gervais is touring until December 15th. Tom Papa has his new special on Netflix today. This one is called Tom Papa, What a Day, filmed at the Wilbur Theater in Boston. Tom talks about the highs and lows of parenting, his reliance on modern tech, rescuing his pet pug, and how his marriage has evolved over time. Tom is a fantastic comedian. Here comes the butt. We all heard the butt coming, Johnny Mac. But his last special on Netflix was when I really, really started to zone in on Clapter. If you watch his previous special, Tom would set up a bunch of things, get to the end of his storytelling, and the audience would not laugh. They would clap. And it was really jarring. So hopefully in this special, Tom gets some laughs, not clapter. Tom was on the Last Laugh podcast. This is interesting. Last year, there were reports that the Game Show Network would be producing a new trivia show called In the USA Today in partnership with the newspaper USA Today. Tom Papa was rumored as the host. The show never happened. Papa told the Last Laugh podcast it's because somebody didn't like a joke from one of his specials and they pulled the plug on the whole project. Then they went through all my material from my whole career, including even appearances on Rogan's podcast. Tom said, and they couldn't come up with one other thing, and they still yanked it. I wonder what the one thing was. Tom said, I have a lot of comedian friends that say, once they come for Tom Papa, then we know the game is over. Atsuko Atkatska has her new special on HBO this week. Vulture asked, do you identify as hot? Atsuko said, I do. I didn't always. And that's what's even hotter about it. Getting to feel hot is so nice. Dancing makes me feel hot, especially because the type of dance I really love to watch and try to embody on stage, or even just when I'm home cooking, is dance hall. Dance hall is just so sexy and so like from your inner gut. It's so powerful and there are no words. It's just your body and you. Trevor Noah wrapped up The Daily Show last week. He had a couple final jokes they included. When I started the show, I had three clear goals. I was like, I'm going to make sure Hillary gets elected. I'm going to make sure that I prevent a global pandemic from starting. And I'm going to become best friends with Kanye West. So I think it's time to move on. I know a lot of people are sad, but please don't be sad. You should be happy. The African leader is peacefully leaving power. That's never a guarantee. Trevor told the audience, I'm grateful to you, every single one of you. I remember when we started the show, we couldn't get enough people to fill an audience. Every seat that has been ever filled to watch something that I'm doing, I always appreciate because I know the empty seat that sits behind it. So thank you. Thank you to the people who watch, the people who share the clips, everybody who's had an opinion, everybody who's been kind enough and gracious enough. He thanked viewers who critiqued the show, as well as those who hate watched and said, we still got the ratings. Thank you.
A good way to support the show, join the $2 Club. All you do is you go to buymeacoffee.com slash Daily Comedy News. You join the $2 Club, then once a month, they'll hit your card for 2 bucks, which will go to me. Thank you for supporting the show in advance. Buymeacoffee.com slash Daily Comedy News. All right, let's head on over to Gossip Corner. Pete Davidson, yeah, he's like the mayor of Gossip Corner. Well, he's selling his Staten Island home. Whoa, he's moving to Brooklyn. What? Pete Davidson can't move to Brooklyn. He has put his condo on the market for $1.3 million. The property includes two bedrooms, three bathrooms, unobstructed views of the New York City skyline, and close proximity to the Staten Island Ferry for easy commutes into Manhattan. That'll get you in trouble, though, because then you fall in love with the ferry and you get this idea, hey, why don't I buy a ferry and turn it into a comedy club? None of that is a good idea, but Pete did that. But hey, I lived long enough that the Second Avenue subway finally got built. So someday, sure, Pete Davidson will have a comedy club on a ferry. I'll wait. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival has announced their lineup includes Daniel Slas, Rosilla Carlson, and Phil Wang, who's fantastic. I loved his special. Discover new solo acts from British cabaret performer and comedian Jordan Gray, Edinburgh Fringe Best Newcomer Leo Rich, Winner of the 2021 Funny Women Award, Lara Rakote. Comedy Zone Asia is back with stars from Singapore, India, Malaysia, and Indonesia. You guys know I love the international stuff. Although I guess if I were at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, I would be the international stuff. Hmm. A new show from Sam Campbell. Why don't you go on YouTube and look up Sam Campbell? His stuff is fantastic. Festival favorites, Kitty Flanagan, Luke Hedgie, Geraldine Hickey, Will Anderson, Lizzie Hu, Dane Simpson, and more. We are deep into Australian comics. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Melbourne is a fantastic city. If you've got the money and the time and you like comedy, just Melbourne is just wonderful. I would love to go March 29th through April 23rd. And from time to time, I mentioned that I'm the writer on a podcast called Palace Intrigue. We talk about the royal family. And what I mean by that is we cover Meghan Markle. She's always the story. Did you see Harry and Meghan have a documentary on Netflix? Yeah, the numbers have been off the charts on that show. Separately from that, you know about Welcome to Wrexham? Wrexham being the soccer club that Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, you know Rob as Mac on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, they own a soccer team in Wales. You know about this? Let's bring everything I like together. King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla went to Wrexham. They met Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Charles and Camilla met players and staff and the co-chairman and they toured the grounds. Ryan and Rob joked they had etiquette lessons ahead of the visit. Ryan Reynolds said, I would say that we're impossibly excited to welcome the king to the racehorse ground. This historic church that resides in the heart of Wrexham and is the heart of Wrexham. Rob and I said early on, this holds true. And for the rest of our lives, we will do anything to uplift and elevate this community and this club. And having the king pay a visit is certainly one way to do it. That's for sure. Very excited. They were asked if they had watched the Harry and Meghan documentary. I don't know if Ryan saw it or not. No quote attributed to him. Rob said, I've never heard of it. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. Join the $2 Club at buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. See you tomorrow.